Hello, we're going to be doing user calibration and we're going to verify the alarm operation. Okay, I have a Max HP or the 2 and watt version of the Super Spot Max already warmed up and I have a fiber optic light guide, a model OLB 1057. Excuse me, OLB 1056 quad fiber. And there we go. Four fibers. Okay. We'll start with the uh, user calibration. And all we have to do is depress these two buttons here on the UV output section. Press until you see the word cal on the timer uh, panel. There you go, cal. Let go of it. Now, with your light guide pointed in the safe direction, activate the shutter and let it go down through its uh, calibration sequence. Once these two numbers uh, stop counting, you can let go. Pull out the light guide. Take your quartz rod or the quartz calibration picture. Stick it into the nose piece fully. Okay. And take a radiometer and take some readings. Okay, let's see what I have here. 13. Let it rest for a while. 13. And one more reading. 13. So 13 watts seems to be my average. Okay. Now, since we have a quad fiber optic light guide, we'll just divide 13 by 4 and plug that in as our low value. Look at my big calculator here. Mm -hmm. All right. Clear that. 13 um, divided by 4. That should give us an average of 3.25 watts. We'll plug that into our front panel. Say 3.3. Or let's put 3.2. 3.2 on the low side. That's for the low end reading. Now we press the select switch once until we get high. And we'll take the low reading of uh, 3.25 and multiply by a factor of 1.54. There we go again. Times 1.54 and that should equal 5 watts. So for this particular example, the top end and the is about 5 watts, the low end is about 3.25. Okay. And there we go. Then we press reset to enter in the values. The intensity is very dependent on how good the bulb is and how the condition of the reflector and so on. In this particular case, my operating range at the source is 3.2 watts to 5 watts. That's the operating or actually the output range from the lowest electrical power to the highest electrical power for this particular specific unit. Okay, we've done user calibration with a specific light guide that's going to be used for this machine. And now we're going to verify uh, if the optical feedback system is working. And to do that, you take out the light guide, I mean, actually take, take out the ports. Plug back your uh, light wand. And starting at the lowest intensity level, okay, let's go to the lowest, which I believe was 3.25. and set it for some convenient time, five seconds, four seconds, whatever. Now, we've got it down to the lowest intensity, 3.2 watt per centimeter square. Let's hit the, press the select button and go to the power mode. There you go, power. Idling, it should be about 132, 135, 140, whatever. Now, when you hit the shutter, that's gonna jump up and to a little bit higher level. Typically like 140. And here we go. Let me step activate the shutter. 
it'll peak up to 200, then the regulation circuit will bring it down to a lower level because we have the intensity set at the lowest level. It's 144, okay? 144 watts. So that tells me the bulb is getting uh, a little bit more energy other than standby energy. Okay, there you go. Now this is at the lowest intensity level. Now I'll bring it up, I'll bump it up to 4 watts. Now remember, uh, our electrical power was typically 140, 144, or one, about 140-ish at the lowest electrical power. Now from 3.2 to uh, 4 watts, let's see what our electrical power should be uh, going to read. should be higher. There you go. It's going to peak up to 200 and regulate down to, one, to 160 or whatever it takes to give you the intensity. Okay, wait one more time. There you go. And down. It's stabilizing. And this is just to demonstrate the optical feedback operation. Okay, now let's test the alarm. Okay, I'll bring up to the maximum value of 5 watts. The alarm will only come on if the electrical power to the bulb is higher than, uh, I would say, 170, 170 watts per 20 watt max. So you will see uh, or you'll hear the alarm kick in if the energy level to the bulb exceed 205 watts. And okay, so let's, let's try that. Okay, remember I got it on five, well, five watt per centimeter square, and I got back to the power range right here, the power mode. Hit it. There you go. That's the alarm. Notice it went up to 203, then it's clamping down to 180. Because the hotter the bulb gets, the brighter it gets, uh, it, it's, it's much more stabilized. I'll hit it one more time. Here, 203 watts, 185. There you go. One more time. And there you go. It's just 182 watts at full power. It means the bulb is nice and warm, so it doesn't need to push the bulb uh, with more power to get the same amount of intensity. Okay. Now we'll drop it one notch under. Say four watts. And go back to the power mode. Get it? There you go, 160. Very mid level. Okay. Now we go back to an even lower intensity level, which is probably the lowest end right here, 3.2 watt per centimeter square. And we'll press the select button to the uh, power mode again. And that should only jump up to about 140 watts. There you go. Naturally, it'll peak up to 203, then the circuit will kick in and regulate it. Peak, regulate. And the whole idea is, during the life of the ball, in theory, and in practice also, as the intensity is lower because the bright is because the bulb is aging, the circuit will compensate uh, for that loss of intensity in real time by boosting the electrical power to the bulb to make it brighter. And there will be a point where the intensity cannot be met and the um, electrical power will be close to 180 watts. It will peak out at 203 watts then probably stay about 180 watts. That's when the bulb needs to be changed. Okay, so if I go back to about uh, 4 watts, again, I should have about 160 some odd watts. Uh, yeah, watts of electrical power. There you go. And then if if I can't maintain that intensity, uh, actually if the bulb can no longer generate the intensity at 160 watts, the power supply will be increased automatically to boost up the brightness. Let me do this. And 
and I'll bring it back to say 4.9 watts per centimeter square and go back to the electro power level. Up, there you go. That's the alarm. That means this unit is driving the ball close to the maximum edge. Whenever it hits 203 watts or whatever, that the alarm will kick in and latch in uh, for that curing cycle. Okay. So now the high end again at uh, five watt per centimeter square intensity. You hear the alarm, and if you toggle to the power, you'll see why. 204, then down to 180. Now if I go back to the bottom end, three point two, I'll set it to the uh, power mode again and open the shutter. There we go. It's under the uh, it's above the idle value of 131 but way below the maximum level. Now what's let's look at the electrical power uh, increments. We have this at 3.2 watts. I'll set it for 3.3 and let's see what kind of power increase we we'll get. 147, okay. And I'll bring it back to 3.2. So from 147 back down to uh, 3.2, we have 144 watts. So it's a 3 watt difference. 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, let's try 3.5. There you go. It's getting right there. The power is being increased. And you want to test the alarm again. There you go. And this is happening at the higher end, the higher intensity level. So that's how I know that optical feedback is working by manipulating the intensity from the lowest to the highest and observing the electrical power. Uh, at the high end, which is about 180 watts to 203 watts, the alarm will kick in. At the low end, it should not kick in. Okay. If you don't see any sort of alarm function during the user cal, after performing user calibration, then definitely there is something wrong. Uh, either with the user calibration procedure or with the machine. Okay, that's all.